All right, what's up guys? This is Sharif, AKA Alpha Flex. And today I'm going to start a new series that I'm going to call Powerlifting Explained. And the reason why I'm doing this is because um, a few months back, I competed in my first powerlifting meet and a lot of people are getting into powerlifting now. It's getting a lot more popular than it used to be. It used to be kind of like an underground thing. Like a lot of people would, uh, would compete in it and would be really strong, but no one would know about what's going on and they wouldn't really understand um, how it was because it wasn't like readily available information for everyone to understand. Really you only understood it if you were involved in the whole meet process already. And that's kind of something that I noticed as I was getting ready for my first meet. Uh, there's things that I wish w I, that I knew. All the information is out there on the internet somewhere, but none of it is really combined uh, into one place, one article, one video, uh, something like that. It's just kind of scattered across the internet. You kind of just have to sift through everything and try to find it yourself. Um, and I'm, that's why I'm making the series, just to kind of bring everything together so that everyone can understand it. So what I'm gonna try to do is uh, upload a weekly video every Friday. And uh, in each video, I'm going to explain something about powerlifting. I'm gonna try to go in order from the most basic thing to the most advanced thing um, and it's kind of going to go in order for a beginning competitor someone who wants to start competing uh, and it's kind of going to go through the process that I was going through as I was getting ready to compete first off we're going to start with literally the most basic thing what is powerlifting powerlifting is a weightlifting sport that is often confused with Olympic weightlifting and bodybuilding the sport consists of three lifts which are the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. Each lifter gets three attempts at each lift, so nine lifts total. You combine the highest number that you hit from each lift, and then that goes into your total. So the lifter with the highest total pounds lifted between the three lifts is the winner. But um, you, you only count the strongest lift that each person does. So for example, for your first attempt on uh, squat, you do 200 pounds, and your second attempt you do 300 pounds, and you fail your third attempt for 400 pounds. They're only going to count your 300 pounds, so they're gonna add, so that's going to be your squat number, and then you're gonna get a bench press number, and then you're gonna get a deadlift number. So they're combining the three. The next rule is that you can never go down in weight between attempts. You can either stay the same or go up, but you can never go down. Okay, so for example, you squatted 200 pounds for your first attempt. For your second attempt, you are not allowed to do 199 pounds, but you're allowed to do 200 pounds again, or you're allowed to do 201 pounds, or you can, you can do 300 pounds, or you can do 400 pounds, but you can never go down from wherever you're at. And that rule is going to be really important later on when, we ch when we're figuring out what we want to choose for our opening attempts um, in terms of strategy for the meet. Now I'm going to go over the rules involved in each lift. Alright, so the most important rule when it, goes to, when it comes to lifting these weights is that you need to make sure you're following the commands that the official is giving you. Because even if you lift the weight completely textbook according to all the rules, if you don't listen to the commands and you don't adhere to the commands, it's going to be a no lift. Um, so let's say you go up for your squat and you squat before the judge tells you to squat or you rack the weight before the judge tells you to rack the weight. It's going to be, it's not going to count. It's going to be a failed attempt. And the reason for that, a lot of people always wonder why that is like, oh, I lifted the weight. Why doesn't count? The reason for that is that you need to be able to show yourself, the judges, and the audience that you have full control, 100% control over the weight that you're lifting. The judges can't think that you're lifting off of brute strength or that you're just lifting off of luck. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the specific rules for each lift. Now across the board for every single lift, one rule will apply to all of them. Um, well, act technically two rules. So like I said, you have to follow all the commands. Um, but the other rule is that um, the bar always has to be moving in the direction that you're trying to move it. So for example, um, if you are deadlifting and you get halfway up 
and the bar goes down at any point, even if you lock the weight up, it doesn't count as a lift. It's not a good lift because the bar was not in a forward motion going up the whole time. For the squat specifically, it's uh, a fairly simple lift. Um, you have to make sure you adhere to the commands. Most of the time the commands are going to be squat and rack. The only rule for actually lifting weight is that the crease of your hip has to go below the top of your knee. And you don't have to squat as the grass, but you can. Um, but a lot of lifters don't see it as necessary because it's not going to be it's not going to be given any more merit than the guy who just squatted below parallel. Okay. The bench press is also pretty simple, um, but it does have the most commands out of all the lifts. Um, so first you're going to get set, um, you're going to have somebody unrack the weight for you, you're going to have it here, uh, and then they're going to tell you to start, and then when you start, it, that means go down. Uh, and then this right here, this is the most important part right here. When you have the weight down here at the bottom, um, it has to be, the bar has to be on your chest, it has to be sitting in your chest, but it has to, the, the judges want to make sure you're, you're working with dead weight. So when you're down there, there can't be any movement and any shifting at all. The bar has to be completely still. You have to be completely still. Um, and before they tell you to press it because they won't tell you to press it if the bar is moving at all. And then again, when you, when you start to press that at no point can the bar come back down while you're trying to press, it has to go straight up. So even if you stop, you can stop but you can't go down. So as long as the bar is completely moving, it's good. And then once you get to the top, then you lock it out again. You have to hold it before the judge tells you to rack it. And then when you rack it, you rack it. It's easy. All right, so the last lift, deadlift, is the most simple. It has the least rules out of any lift. And that's why it's probably most people's favorite lift. There's only one command you have to adhere to, and it's um, you just lower the weight, it's down. Uh, so what that means is they just load the they just load the bar up for whatever weight you chose, and then they tell you that the that the platform is ready. And then when it's ready, you can walk up and you can do whatever you want. But as soon as you start lifting, as long as the bar doesn't go back down before you lock out, you're good. And then while you're while you're locked out, just hold the weight and wait for the judge to tell you to go down. It's that simple. So. Um, a lot of times you'll see people like get super psyched up, like they'll like run around the building and then like run up to the to the bar and just grab it and start lifting. And it's like it's definitely the most intense lift, um, and the rules allow for it to be intense because there's no like there's no rules other than just pick the weight up and then put it down when they tell you to put it down. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to talk about for the basic powerlifting stuff is the Wilkes score, W I L K S. I don't need to spell that, it's probably gonna be on the screen. I'm gonna get into further detail on this later, um, but all you need to know right now is that there's all kinds of math that goes into it, um, but it's a conversion of your total to show how you did in the meet overall um, outside of your weight class and outside of your age group. And it's based off of your, like how much you weigh versus how much weight you lifted and how strong you are relative to that. So what does that mean? So if you weigh 180 pounds and you squat 400, uh, according to your Wilkes score, you would be stronger than the guy that weighs 200 pounds that also squatted 400. Because he's heavier, he has more mass to be able to push your weight with. Um, so for him to do the same number as you, who's lighter, that would mean that you are stronger relative to your weight. So I think I covered everything. Uh, it's like super basic how the meat goes. Uh, all of that stuff, like super, super basic stuff that I didn't even know before I, before I did my meet. Um, but uh, next week, I'm going to talk about the different powerlifting federations and which one is right for you and how to like how you should choose the federation that you want to compete in because that was actually a really big issue for me i didn't i didn't know that there were different federations i thought there was just one and then i went to compete and i was like oh there's different federations so that's going to be next week on friday okay so if you guys want to learn more about powerlifting and stay up to date with this video series make sure to subscribe and share this video so that other people can learn as well and that's it, that's all I got. Keep on flexing, let's get stronger. See you guys in the next video.
Kerajaan.